Hey, welcome back to our application that we're working with, with the James Bond data. And we created a list of all of the gadgets that are showing up in the movies for James Bond. In this video, I want to show one item. So if I clicked a details link and I get a, a URL that looks like this, where it says gadgets slash details and then the ID number, I would expect to see the details of that one object on the screen. So that's what we're going to program in this video. So we could start in one of several locations. I think probably the best way to start is with the database, and we will create a new method here for fetching exactly one. So since we already have a model that's to, to copy and paste from, let's, let's do exactly that. So I'm going to copy everything that we did in the previous uh, video, which is fetch all. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom and paste. Let's rename this thing. Instead of fetch all, let's call it fetch one. And we expect to have here one item, and it has to match the ID number of the database. So we will not need to do a return list of a whole bunch of stuff, so we can probably delete that. We're going to need the connection string. We're going to select all of these things, except we're going to have a different uh, idea here. We're going to say where the ID matches the uh, value that we're going to supply. So I'm going to put in here uh, an at symbol and the word ID. We're going to use a method of programming called prepared statements, which prevents uh, SQL injection attacks. So we're going to have to define what this means here. It's obviously it's going to be the same value as what comes in here, but we're going to have to associate it on a separate line. So I'm going to put in a comment here so I don't forget to do this that says associate the at ID with a parameter ID. Then we come down to see what else is going on. We've got a reader and it says if it has rows, we could do a while statement. We could do the while statement, it won't hurt if we leave it as while loop, but we're only going to get one because we know that there's exactly one match. So I'm just going to uh, change the, uh, I'm going to leave it as a while statement because it'll, it'll execute one. And we don't want to return an entire list, so I'm going to modify the list here and return it with something else. So let's see what we can do to make this uh, parameter match. So the key to make this work is we have to go back underneath where it says command. So the command uh, line has to come first. Then we do command.parameters.add. So we're going to say that the quote at ID symbol is going to be defined as an integer. So system.data.sqldatatype.int. Okay, so that's probably some constant value saved away in that class. Then finally we do dot value equals. And this here, this ID has to match with the exact parameter that is up here. So if I were to choose XXX as my parameter, I would have to put in down here XXX here. So they have to match. So just to make things match like they are logical, I'm going to use ID. It doesn't matter if it's capital or lowercase, but it does have to be consistent with the parameter that was passed in. Now we're going to return a gadget model. Let's, so let's type in the word here, gadget, since we're creating a gadget here. And you're going to find that there is a problem. It says here, you've, you've got a gadget that you're pulling out of the database. And down here it says it doesn't exist. So just for those of you that are C-sharp experts or any programming expert really, you notice that the way that the scope is on this variable is inside the brackets. So since we declared it here and we hit the end of the bracket, it goes out of the computer's memory. So it's like forgotten. So we need to maybe move this. So I'm going to cut that out and let's move it above here. So we start with the gadget model before any of this searching. And now this should go back to its regular uh, st status that it had before. So the problem here, it says something about cannot complete, uh, complic implicitly convert this from a, from a list to... Wh where is that coming from? Well, since I copied and pasted, I left the, part, the return type in the wrong type. It says I'm going to return an entire list of these things. And I don't want a list. I just want one of them. So I'm going to just get rid of the word list in the little brackets that go around it. And so fetch1 is going to return exactly one object. And so now, hopefully, the return statement matches with what I promised at the very top. So that's looking better. So I think we have fetch1 set up. Let's see if we can make it work in our uh, actual view. So let's go back to the controller. 
And now we need to create a new method that will say get one of these. So let's create a new uh, method. And down at the bottom, we'll call this thing details. So details is going to show exactly one. And we're expecting to have the value of one ID number. So we'll put in that as an integer parameter. Now when we return the results, we'll create a new view called details. And we'll have to pass it a gadget. So we don't have a gadget to send yet. We're going to have to go get that from the database. So to get it from the database, we're going to have to create an instance of the database. So we'll say gadget DAO, and we'll instantiate that. And then we'll get a new gadget model, and we will get it from the method called fetch1. And of course, we need to provide the number of the guy that we're looking for. So his number is ID. Now, as soon as you see the pattern that I'm programming here, you're going to say, why do you keep instantiating a gadget DAO? Well, we have to have some access to it. So this is the simplest way to get it. In a later lesson in the course that we're teaching, we're going to show you how to use something called uh, dependency injection. So that way we don't have this so tightly coupled with our classes. But for right now, this is the simplest way that is straightforward to understand. Okay, so now we need to have a details view. Well, that doesn't exist yet. So if we look in the views folder, we only have this one called index. So we need to create this one for one view. So let's do a right click and we're going to choose add view and let's call it, just leave it details and let's look at the uh, different templates. Do we have anything there that would probably work? Well, sure enough, there's one called details. And then it says, you're going to show me all the details of one item. Well, which item are you thinking of? Well, I'm thinking of showing you a gadget model. So we'll select that one. And we'll leave everything else checked here and choose Add. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so the gadget model view, it looks like it's done. It's going to show a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see if it actually works. I'm going to run this and test it out. So you can see that uh, the application appears not to be working, but not so fast. I think it will work. So the URL that was automatically supplied to us is gadgets slash details. Well, remember, this needs to have a number. So if I add a number one after it, for example, and now I run it, uh, we've got ourselves the first item in the list. So let's try another number. Let's try 10. And sure enough, we have a different one. So you can choose the ID number of any object in your database, and it should pull it out here. Now, if I choose back to list, look at there, it works again. Now the details link here, I think is automatically programmed so that we can get to the list. So go ahead and choose details on anything in there and you've got yourself two queries now. We've got the entire index and then if you want to see one of them, you choose details. So let's, uh, let's go back and uh, add some more things. So maybe in the next video, we'll choose create and edit and we can add some new items or uh, edit the ones that are there. So that's coming up next.